Hey, it's me, Nalbazar, and welcome to another video. In this video, I'm going to be going over a brand new Planeswalker to Magic the Gathering Puzzle Quest. That is Calyx, Destiny's Hand. Now, Calyx entered the vault with the introduction to the 4.0 patch and Theros Beyond Death. It is the first Calyx that we have seen in this game. It's also the first Calyx in Paper Magic. Calyx has three abilities, all of which are going to synergize with a bunch of the new mechanics that have come out in the Theros Beyond Death set, and relatively decent mana gains across the board. So, the first ability is Bless of Nyx. Pick one of the first three cards from your library. Fetch that card. If that card is an enchantment or aura card, your first creature gets plus four, plus four. Then it gains the enchantment subtype. The second ability, Faded Hubris, is going to say for 12 loyalty, exile target opposing creature with base toughness X or less. Then exile an opposing enchantment support with shield X or less. X is the sum of your devotion to green and white. And then finally, the third ability is 18 loyalty and says create a Nyxborn champion token. Your creatures get plus two plus two for each enchantment support you control. The token itself is a support with four shields, and at the beginning of your turn, return the first aura card and the first enchantment card from your graveyard to your hand. Those cards gain full mana. Now, the third ability is really what drives Calyx. So if you get that third ability down and you have a deck that can pump things into your graveyard, then you can take absolute control of the match. You can do some really strong things. And because you're getting all of those free cards from the graveyard, you're also going to be boosting your devotion pretty quickly. So it'll make it so that once you get that third ability down, then you can start firing off Faded Hubris to exile all the things your opponents play. Now, you can't exile artifact supports and you can't exile just base supports like Hyxis, but given that you get to exile both a creature and an enchantment support, that's pretty useful, especially with the new gods. We're going to be seeing, I would imagine, quite a few decks with those in the set as people get more of the cards. So this gives you a nice way to get rid of those. The Bless of Nyx ability I haven't found as much use for. I found that at 9 loyalty, it's a little bit overcosted for what it does. It's nice to have the ability to fetch cards, but that second ability to exile your opponent's cards in play is just such a strong ability in conjunction with commune with the gods, just bringing things back from your graveyard. And remember, auras, right? So Nyxborn Champion is going to be bringing auras back. Now, auras are spells that permanently buff one of your creatures. So if you have just one in your graveyard, then with Nyxborn Champion down, you get to cast that every single turn. Now, I don't have Chromanticore, so I will not be able to showcase the interaction between Nyxborn Champion and Chromanticore in this video, but suffice to say that if you have Chromanticore, then you will probably have a lot of fun with Calyx Destiny's Hand. Calyx's mana gains are plus four to white and green, plus two to blue, and minus one to red and black. Calyx plays particularly well, like I said, with our new mechanics in the set, so Calyx plays well with Devotion, in that Commune with the Gods is going to bring stuff back and let you play it, so that's going to boost up your Devotion. Furthermore, Faded Hubris is going to take advantage of that Devotion. He's also going to help with the Heroic mechanic, in that you will be getting Auras back every single turn with that third ability down, and so you should be able to target your Heroic creatures and then trigger that heroic ability every turn. And then also Constellation. So Constellation is an ability that's gonna trigger every time you play an enchantment and you're bringing an enchantment back from your graveyard every single turn with this Nyxborn champion down. Now, one of the things that I'm sure you hear that I'm repeating is with Nyxborn champion down. So like I said earlier, Calyx really shines once you get that third ability down. The other nice thing about this third ability is that because it's just you return the first enchantment card, 
that includes enchantment creatures. So if you use, say, Gather the Pack and you start dumping enchantment creatures into your graveyard, you're going to get one of those creatures back every turn with full mana. So that's going to help for cast objectives where you need to cast things. And it's also just going to help with playing big beefy creatures for free. So that's Calyx as a planeswalker with his abilities. If we take a quick look at Calyx's deck slots, well, not deck slots, right? But the, the cards that Calyx allows you to use. Calyx is pretty nice in the support field. So this is actually the deck I've been playing with. You'll see it in just a minute. But Calyx allows you to use seven supports, which is really nice. Most of the other support-based Planeswalkers give you at most six supports in your deck. I know that there are some older ones that have more, but just the more recent Planeswalkers haven't given us quite so many supports. And as Calyx really is driven by uh, the opportunity to use a lot of supports, there are some decks that you can use that are really strong where you really take advantage of using six, seven supports in the Calyx deck. Now, this deck that I'm gonna be showcasing You'll see that it includes two enchantment creatures that are brand new. One of them is Nyx Bloom Ancient, and it is an enchantment elemental that also has devotion. So when this creature deals combat damage to your opponent's planeswalker, you're going to convert X gems to your highest devotion color, and then X is your devotion up to eight. So once you get that eight devotion, that's it, it caps, you're fine. We've got Dryad of the Elysian Grove. So this dude is a 6-8. At the beginning of your turn, the first land card in your hand is going to gain full mana. And then at the beginning of your turn, all of your colored mana bonuses become 3 until end of turn. He pairs really nicely with Omen of the Hunt, which is going to convert gems to your Planeswalker's colors upon entering the board. And then it very often actually winds up destroying itself. And then when it's destroyed, pick one of the first two land cards and fetch that card. And then Dryad at the beginning of your turn is going to give that first land card in your hand full mana. So there's a lot of really nice synergy there. Now a few other nice things. Gather the pack I mentioned you can use this to dump enchantment creatures into your graveyard. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing in this deck. We've got Hydra's Growth, which is just filthy. Absolutely filthy. So uh, this card is an aura and it gives target creature plus two plus two, that creature gains enchanted, and then at the beginning of your turn, that creature gets plus X plus X permanently, where X is that creature's base power. So with these two creatures, Nyx Bloom Ancient is going to be getting plus seven plus seven every turn, and Dryad of the Elysian Grove is gonna be getting plus six plus six. Because of Calyx's third ability, once we get a Hydra's Growth off, we can use one every single turn. So we can put a Hydra's Growth on the Ancient, and we can put a Hydra's Growth on the Dryad to make both of them boost every single turn. I've thrown Altar of the Pantheon into this deck because it's going to help increase the Devotion a little bit more quickly. And then it also has an Activate ability to convert gems to our Planeswalker colors. The other pieces of the deck are Removal and Staples to draw cards and whatnot. So let's just hop into a match and see how it plays. All right, so let's test out Calyx. First things first, we're up against Koth. So for Calyx, we want to try and take advantage of his abilities around enchantments and auras. So you'll see that I've thrown a bunch of things that are enchantments and auras into the deck. And I've also got something to help me increase my devotion. So this is actually a pretty sweet starting match. Uh, we we lost the white match, but that's okay. Uh, let's see. How strong can we make this guy to be seen? Uh, okay, Koth is getting huge matches. That's absolutely what we love, isn't it? Nope, I did not love that as much. All right. You are a 6-8. We want mm, the Ancient. Sort of. But only sort of. All right. How can we make it out of this alive? Uh, there are some simple answers, but none of the simple answers are looking good right now. I'll be, I'll be, I'll be totally honest. Uh, that was, that was good. That was, that was very good. All right. So now... 
the thing about this is my opponent has that 10 10 and I have this 7 7 and I want my 7 7 to be able to survive until the end of the turn so I can't use faded hubris yet and I can't use bless of Nyx so I just have to hope that Hydra's growth is going to go off this turn and the best way to do that is to make a match any match Nalthazar this match right here specifically that is the best way of doing it so uh, it gets 2-2 two, two, and then at the beginning of your turn it gets that boost okay so I'm just gonna lose that 7-7 seven, seven. that's just that's just how it's gonna be you gotta lose the 7-7 seven, seven. and it's okay to lose the 7-7 seven, seven because we can use Calix. Ooh, yes, yes. All right, we can use Calix's third here, and then that's going to give us our dude back. So our dude is the next dude that just died, but Calix's third ability lets us bring things back from the graveyard. You are a meanie pants, Koth, a big old meanie pants, but you lost your creature, so I'm not upset with you. Now, let's start getting things back for free. Let's make Koth's life scary. So Nyxborn Champion has come out at the beginning of your turn. Return the first aura card and the first enchantment card from your graveyard to your hand. Those cards gain full mana. So we happen to have auras and enchantments in the graveyard. The enchantments are the creatures. The auras are the, well, the Hydra thing. So uh, you are bedeviling the wrong things, Koth, because we are getting nasty things down. So here we get to get the Nyx Bloom Ancient down properly, which is great. I'm still stealing red matches because we're against Koth, but now we get to have the Nyx Bloom, we get to buff it up. Even if Koth gives this thing Berserker, that's fine, because now this dude's going to start pumping up big time. He's going to become a super baddie. And now we can actually put Hydra's Growth on the Dryad, and here you get to see the true power of Kallax. That's awesome. Okay, so um, not looking like we're going to be able to get a super big match, but, you know, the game is like, you don't think you will, but really, you will. So now our devotion's getting pretty high. We should be converting a bunch of gems to green, which means that we should be getting a bunch of extra creature goodness. Ooh, I like this. I really like this. Okay, so... What all is happening? There's a lot happening right now. Um, okay, so Calix is third here. Nyxborn Champion is giving us two cards a turn. I used Gather the Pack to throw things into my graveyard. And so in throwing things into my graveyard, I'm getting those creatures back every turn. Furthermore, I'm casting Hydra's Growth every single turn because I get it back for free. And since it's an aura, I can cast it and then just bring it back. My Devotion is looking pretty good at 10. So we're, we're sitting pretty at 10 Devotion, and then this turn that's going to go up by another 3, so once you get that third ability down, it looks like you can actually get quite a lot of Devotion really quickly if you build a deck around Devotion. So I don't have a whole lot of reasons to do anything but Bless of Nyx right now, and uh, yeah, I definitely want Gather the Pack, so let's move it on up, and all of our mana bonuses are 3 from the Dryad right now meaning that anything is going to give us six mana. So let's just take that white match, gather the pack, throw some more things in the graveyard, and Hydra's Growth just to get more power on this dude. Convert a whole bunch to green. Fine. Don't give me extra green matches. But here, yeah, wow. So uh, here we're seeing Calyx like a big boy. That's, that's pretty cool. All right. And we're just... Oh man, can you imagine if this deck had Chromanticore? I do not have Chromanticore. The game decided that I was not worthy of Chromanticore. Let's use the second ability. Let's use Faded Hubris. Let's just exile that goblin. So, Faded Hubris. Wait, let's take a look. That was too fast, Nelvazar. Exile target opposing creature with base toughness X or less. Then exile an opposing enchantment with shield X or less, where X is the sum of your devotion to both green and white. My devotion to green is 14. So I get to exile anything with 14 toughness or less, which is sweet, which is really, really sweet. Okay, 
Let's let's get some more mana here, guys. Nyx Bloom Ancient is getting bigger. Let's make it even bigger. Uh, Koth isn't even going to live. Who are we kidding? All right. Um, no, I'm not going to destroy one of my creatures. Boom. That was pretty awesome. Okay. Alrighty, so this brings us to the last part of the video. What is my final take? What is my review of Calyx Destiny's Hand? Now, I should say before I get into this final bit that Octagon was kind enough to grant me Calyx to make this video. So thank you, Octagon, for letting me use Calyx. Now, my review for Calyx. Calyx on my tier list of A, B, C, D, E, F. Calyx resides somewhere between B and C. He is a little bit stronger than many of the Planeswalkers in C, but not quite as strong as some of the Walkers in B. Calyx's third ability, Commune with the Gods, is very powerful. And if you got a lot of green or white cards from Theros Beyond Death, then you might find that you really like Calyx Destiny's Hand. This Planeswalker plays exceptionally well with the cards from the set. So if you were able to pick up a bunch of the set, then Calyx will definitely be a powerful Planeswalker. If you do not have a lot of cards from the Theros Beyond Death set, I actually spent my first two hours or so testing Calyx without having opened any cards from the set, and Calyx definitely struggles without having the cards in the set. He definitely, he definitely plays off of those heroic enchantment and devotion mechanics. I played strongly with the enchantment and devotion, and I found that he was very good for those. And so if you are enjoying those mechanics, if you want to have a planeswalker that will help you enable those mechanics a little bit better, then by all means, go ahead, pick up Calyx. If you do not pick up the bundle for money, then I do think that Calyx is worth picking up for gems when he ultimately comes out for 650 gems. He is fun, he's powerful, and he's different than other Planeswalkers that we currently have access to. So I hope this review gave you a good look at Calyx and helped you determine if you want to get him or not. And I will see you in the next one.